Blah! Y'all already know what it is, your boy Yako, what it do, the outlet to reality, the holders podcast in Vegas and Chicago, what up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama, or maybe hide from your baby mama, <laughs> just kidding. But anyways, fans, thank you for staying tuned, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, cha-ching! And today we have a very special guest, he's one of my Caruso, my tourist study partner, Give it up for Gil. What's up, brother? What's going on, brother? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm I'm, I'm ha finally happy you're here. <laughs> finally. I'm glad to be so, here, though. I appreciate you. Anytime, brother. Anytime. And, and I do want to say, Gil, uh, for my fans to know and everyone, I, I want to share how we met, you and I. Basically, you know, we was at I was at Forum last year, and... uh we sit, I was sitting there and you came inside and and I said, oh, man, my Latino brothers, you know, you know, my family Panamanian as well. So uh, we connected, you know, you came in and we sat and we talked. You explained to me that, you know, you met Rabbi uh, Farmowitz's brother out in Henderson at another synagogue. And um, I introduced you to uh, Brother Elliot and then Rabbi Farmowitz which was the brother, uh, I introduced you to him, and uh, we've been rocking ever since, so to speak, you know. Um, so it was a great night uh, for Forum, and and just how we got, how we all got together and everything, and I was just amazed how we still continue being friends and, you know, having Torah studies and, you know, going to various different uh, events at the shul, and just meeting a lot of uh, great uh, rabbis there as well. Um, so, you know, I have to say in my top five friends, you were definitely number two, you know, Rabbi Farmwitz. <laughs> and you've got Brother Elliot and <laughs> yourself and a few other brothers. But um, I'm just glad that we all connected. And it's, the, the great thing about it is that it's diversity, you know, uh, amongst the three of us, you know. And I and and I just think that, you know, the world needs to see that more often to say, hey, you know, we can all come together as Jews of different diversities and 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 come together collectively to study and to grow in Judaism. So I'm thankful for that. I love it. I love it, brother. I'm I'm gonna tell you my 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 two cent when when I first met you when when I came in. So for those who don't know, Forum was last February. And it was a big event, at least over a hundred people. And I get into like one of the rooms, right? And I see a lot of people. I get a little anxious when I see too many people, and I'm like, I don't know where to go. I saw Gil in an empty seat right next to him. And I was like, I'm going to pick that spot. You know what I'm saying? I was like, right. I'm going to pick that spot. And I came in, you know, with confidence. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to be honest. Me and Gil, we were the only black and brown in the whole in the whole event. I ain't going to lie. Two Jewish brothers. And he was sitting next to me. And I was like, man, where you from? He's like, oh, I'm from New York. I'm like, no way. I'm from Chicago. I'm like, we're like cousins. We got skyscrapers. So right. you remember that. So we, we, yes. definitely, we definitely have a lot in common. And uh, it, it was so nice, you know, and I was very grateful you introduced me to everybody. And, you know, during Purim, we do hear the Megillah, which is when they read the story of Esther in front of everyone beautiful thing right that was amazing right mm -hmm. and we were making noises you remember people were stomping boom 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 you remember <laughs> right 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 that was a nice experience very yeah. nice experience you know it, and, it, it, and 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 i felt the love there you know um it was just a nice impact of people coming in coming together and just joining porn and learning about the experience of porn because to a lot of people they were novice to that um, some people just never experienced it before. That was actually my first forum here in, in Vegas. So, you know, just to see that and really be a part of that, 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 that was amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm with you, too. I, that was my first time in Vegas being, you know, in that forum event as well. Now, Gil, I do got to say, brother, 
you know, I, I'm very, you know, I'm very grateful. I love what you said, you know, you, you're my top number two. So I, I, I have much love, brother. You know, you, you're my yes. top, my top. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I got to say, I, um, you know, speaking of you, you know, Elliot, real quick, it's amazing how we all have martial arts background, you know, yes. And how Rabbi Farmer was, you know, it's it's so funny. We're like the three uh, three stooges. We we <laughs> made sure that you know Rabbi Farmer was is good. We're like, yeah, all clear, all clear. All right, open the door, open the door. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, funny man. I think yes. I think Rabbi Farmer was is the only rabbi that has bodyguards when he studies. Now, I gotta be honest. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. He's well protected. Oh well yeah, protected, you know. He, East side, you know, it don't matter where. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Oh, man. And, and Gil, yeah. I, I want to know a little bit, uh, if you could share a little bit about, um, you know, growing up in New York, people that were very influential in your life, uh, if it was a friend or a family member, and, and share a little bit about that so we can get to know more, more about you. Well, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Um, my grandmother on my father's side was very orthodox. Um, I never met my grandfather on my father's side. He passed before I was even born, but he left a, a, a big impact on the family and the responsibilities of my uncles. You know, my, of course, my dad and he had five brothers and one sister. So that was a big family to come together as Jews and understand the journey, even after my grandfather passed away. And, you know, I, I wish I was able to meet him because he made an impact in Brooklyn with the Hasidic community, which was amazing um, in, in Brooklyn. So I came from Bedford Stuyvesant area, but we had family in Crown Heights and we would always engage with the Hasidic Jews in Crown Heights. So I was well aware about their custom and how they are and they would you know, speak to my uncles, they would stop. We had neighbors next door that was Hasidic Jews. So we kind of pretty much gravitated uh, to the Hasidic community. Um, my grandmother, which was born in Barbados, um, she was Jewish in Barbados. And how that happened, in other words, from, let's say from like Portugal, they came to Barbados. Okay. They had a, they had a, a, a synagogue in Bridgetown, which is the capital of Barbados. And that's all they knew. Um, you know, the, the sugar cane factory was pretty much a big thing in Barbados. And my great, my, my great grandfather and my grandfather and my grandmother, they was a part of that. So they were raised Jews from that era, which was in the 1600s, my great grandfather. And from that time on, they migrated to New York and they migrated into Brooklyn. And they brought that with them to Brooklyn. And it's something like my grandfather had his own synagogue. They had a brownstone. They converted one floor into a synagogue. And I remember having Shabbos and, and you know, we couldn't spend any money, do any transactions. I, I I was very young, but I watched everything, how my uncles and how my father would do things. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't do any uh, work or anything on Friday and Saturday. And um, I always just thought it was amazing, you know, to, just to experience that. Because a lot of my friends that I grew up with on, on my block, they, they wasn't Jewish. Uh, so, you know, it was a really, uh, I was trying to get a better understanding, like, who we are um, as Jews, because my friends, they were most of them was Christians. Um, some of them were Jehovah Witness. Some of them was Muslims. So it was a lot. I learned a lot from all of them. I understood their religions. I even actually read books just to get a better understanding of their religions. And it was good that I did that because a lot of times what happens is, you know, we 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 come we come together with various different religions, and then we think we know. A whole lot about their religion and we don't sometimes but then a lot of times you can sit and have a good conversation about something and then you can get a better understanding and that puts you in a, in a, in a better place where you don't judge other people you just respect who they are which 
my grandmother was like that with everybody. And that's why, you know, we, we got along with everybody on the block because they just felt we were different, you know, uh, that we were Jewish and really didn't have a lot of Jews on our, on our block itself. We had some, but further down as you got closer to the synagogue on 770 uh, Eastern Parkway, um, you know, that was, that was, that was, that was the Rebbe's uh, synagogue, you know, pretty much, you know, so that was the headquarters. Uh, as time went on, um, even on my mother's side of the family, uh, she was a part of that synagogue in Barbados too, but she didn't really get so much involved in the Jewish community. She just pretty much was like, okay, my last name is like in stone in 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 in, in Barbados uh, of, of them being Jews and being a part of that particular synagogue. But the amazing thing was my father's side of the family, my mother's side of the family never knew each other in Barbados too. They actually came to Brooklyn. Wow. So my grandfather on my mother's side and my grandmother knew my father's family, knew how much of an impact my grandfather on my father's side was as a Jew. But when my grandmother passed away, it's kind of like everybody got derailed uh, from Judaism because we were all pretty much young. I probably was like maybe 12, 13. Then my siblings, they was like teenagers, I'm the youngest. So it's kind of like everybody just fell in. Like even all my cousins on both sides, everybody just pretty much went their way. They, their own way. Some became Christians, you know, and some of them just didn't do anything, <laughs> you know. But um, at, at, at the end of the day, we still re we, we respect my grandmother for all she did for us. And I remember her telling me, you're the glue to the family to keep Judaism going. And when she said that at the time, I was very young and I just did not understand what she was actually talking about till I got older. And then, honestly, I still was trying to find my way, you know, in religion and trying to see, all right, am I going to stay as Jew or am I going to uh, uh, try something else? You know, of course, you know, you have Christianity, you know, that's always been around. I had an understanding of Christianity, but I just never felt it made sense to me as a person. And I didn't feel I was growing in, 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 in the Christianity world, you know, because of, of course all the friends I went to school with, high school, college, they were mostly all Christians. And some of them were Muslim. But I still had it in me to stay as a Jew. It's just that everybody else in my family, some stayed with it, some just decided, hey, they're gonna try church. And, that, and if that's what you decide to do, that's on you, I can't judge you, Hashem. We'll, 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 we'll judge you on what you where you're supposed to be, you know, especially if you had your, your bar mitzvah, you know, bar mitzvah, you know, that's on you. Because once you do all that, you are, you, 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 you're Jewish no matter how you, put, how you put it, you know. But as people in the family get older, they're starting to grow. But what really sparked me um, was COVID. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, uh, the thing was with COVID, and you know, I was very angry because I got COVID and I shouldn't have had gotten COVID. And I'm going to tell you why. And then maybe I was just being mean and stubborn about it. Maybe my Brooklyn was coming out, so to speak. <laughs> uh, when a friend of mine, uh, mother-in-law came in town and she was from Africa. And he, you know, he said, hey, won't you guys come over and meet? you know, meet, meet my mother-in-law and everything. And I said, all right, fine. He lived like a couple of blocks away from me. So I go over there and I noticed this woman was coughing. Like, but it was a cough where he was like, that don't sound good, you know? So they're thinking, all right, maybe she just had a cold coming off this plane. So I'll say three, four days went by and I was doing some bodyguard work and I just couldn't stand up for a long period of time. I said, wow, this is strange. I kept leaning on the wall and I said, ah, you know, so I called uh, a friend of mine and said, hey, man, I need you to cover for me 
on this client because I just can't stand any longer. And I, most of the people that know me, they'll tell you this guy never sits at all. And I didn't want to just all of a sudden sit down, you know, and he was a prominent guy, you know, in, in the community. So, you know, I had to really pay attention on what was going on. But make a long story short, I went to the doctor. Doctor said, hey, you got COVID. So I was like, hey, did I get COVID? Like, you know, but, you know, people saying, oh, it could have been passing people. You just never know how you can get it, right? I didn't have a mask at that time. So, okay, you know, we heard about it. No, okay, be precautious. But where I was at, it just wasn't a, a whole lot of people that I felt that I was going to catch it. But make a long story short, I caught it and then I came home and, you know, I had to, you know, quarantine for two weeks. And what the first thing I did is when I got home, I called this brother and I explained to him, I said, listen, you know, maybe you might want to go get checked because I just uh, caught COVID and it came back positive, of course. And I think you should get checked out and your family should get checked out. So he says to me, Oh, I have it too. How long you had it? Oh, I had it like about three or four days. So I said, you couldn't call me and tell me that you had it. <laughs> you know, wow. I just kind of thought that was kind of odd that you caught it, but you didn't have the decency to pick up the phone and tell me, hey, Gil, get checked out because I got COVID and my family got it. And come to find out it was the grandmother who brought the COVID to the house. So... I was so angry with this guy where I just lost connection with him. I was just like, I just felt like if you're going to be a friend, this is health wise. You don't know if I had had other health issues or, you know, somebody could have passed away. I, I lost three friends in New York to COVID and it was in the best of health. So for you not to call me and be responsible as an adult to say, Hey, Gil, I, I got COVID. You need to go get checked out because my whole family has it. I cut ties with him and I just had to me and him for one thing, you know, we neighborhood friends, but my thing was as you consider me being one of your good friends, I just think that you should have had the decency to do that. At least reach out and say, Hey, so I was a very annoyed man. And, you know, I just kind of felt like, you know, I needed to just move on. Cause I just, I'm, I'm like that when I just feel like, you know, nobody's caring and something like that happened. You know, I can understand you, you You forgot. It was no excuse. He was just telling me I need to go get checked. He didn't. He wasn't apologetic about it to say, hey, you know, Gil, you 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 should go. You know, I'm sorry. He didn't say anything. So I kind of felt like, OK, I just see this is not a good friendship. But the good thing that came out of COVID was I got into my Torah Ooh. and I started reading Ooh. and I started reading. Before you turn around, I'm getting other books. I'm ordering stuff. I'm ordering. I got, you know how many books I got. They call me the walk-in library. You know, when somebody mentions the book to me, like you mentioned a book to me, and what did I do? I'm right on Amazon. Or I'm on Arch. Arch Roll is my best friend. I'm, I have to be honest. Can I, just say, no can I just say, guys, he is not lying. My man right here has more books that anybody know and my guy could read like Gil he's a reader he will read the yeah. book and tell you about it he don't play around I wish yeah. I had that ambition but he he definitely is a reader yeah. so I, I'm proud of you but continue but I, I just had to share that because it's a true story <laughs> yeah so you know what I I had to be a man and call this guy and say hey you know regardless that you didn't call me to tell me I called you and I forgive you. I don't know if you was forgetful or you just didn't think I, it was no importance to it, you know, and I moved on. But like I said, Hashem said, no, you got COVID because I need you now to get back on your Judaism. Ooh. And I was just like, yeah. And I felt it. I was getting up every morning, praying, diving. I was doing it everything you can imagine to get back on track with Judaism. And I have to truly say COVID is what made me 
really, really push the limits on reading. I can fall asleep with the Torah in my hand and I'll wake right back up and go right back into it. Wow. And I just thought that was amazing. And like I said, I love reading. You know that, you know, I, but my whole bookshelf is all on Judaism. Whatever you need to know about Judaism, the Talmud, everything, the Tanya, I got them all. But COVID put me in a box where it's like, you're going to stay in this house. You're going to read the Torah every day. You're not going to sit here and just order things just to order. Because <laughs> a lot of people were doing that. You know, their UPS truck was coming. My neighbor, his UPS truck was coming to his house every other day. But he was just buying stuff. He just, I was, he said, Gil, I'm just buying junk. I can't go out. You know, he, he's right next door to me. So we talking in the driveways at a distance. And he was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just bored. So I'm just shopping. I said, well, you know what? I'm not bored at all because I'm reading the Torah every single day. And I'm just trying to get closer and closer to Hashem. You know, and I just want to be a, a, a better Jew because I was always Jewish. But when you derail you, you you get lost, you get confused. You don't know what direction to go, you know, because you don't have a lot of friends and siblings that are really following the Torah. But I had to thank that brother for his grandmother to come all the way from Africa for me to get sick in order for me to get back into my Judaism. Oh, it, it's, a, it's amazing how life works, right? Uh, it, there's a there's a story of do you do you know the story of Job, Gil? Yeah, but okay, you can share. So you know, <laughs> right? Thank you, brother. Thank you. you know this. Uh, it kind of remind me of of Job because Job, for those who don't know, he he was very righteous, had a big family, he had a lot of wealth, and with like a snap of the finger, like kind of like the times, the, like the Infinity Gauntlet, like Daniels from Marvel. Snap, lost everything. Lost everything. Everything. And he had, you know, it, it was a test, a big test for him. Was he going to continue, you know, following Hashem or is he going to back away, right? Or take a different route. And so you see that in life, sometimes you have to hit whether it's rock bottom or you, sometimes we don't understand why, but there's a reason why. Right. Hashem wants you to be with him. If that's the only way right. he can get your attention, he's going to find a way. Absolutely. So, I, you know, I, I concur with you, what you say, totally, because I wasn't angry. I was feeling so good. I forgot I had COVID because I was getting so much involved in the Torah again. I, You know, look, I, I carry my books, you know, I, and then I got all colors and, and sizes and but this book here, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I, it never gets old to me. It, 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 it excites me to no end that I'm engaged in this Torah every single day. And I love it. And it's a part of my routine every morning. Pray, have some coffee, I read. Tour for about 10, 20 minutes, take my shower, get dressed, get ready to go out here and protect some of these great people that are out here that need my protection. And at the end of the day, this is my protection and I love it. Wow, brother. That's that's beautiful, man. I I, I say, brother, um, you know, I've been with you in a lot of classes with Rabbi Frumowitz. And we've learned a lot of things. You know, what one experience I could say, um, it was our one of our first time going together for a Talmud class that Rabbi Frommel was was teaching, right? He was leading the class. It was about 12 men in the same, you know, room. They had a bunch of food, they had chicken, rice, and it's an Orthodox show, by the way, you know, synagogue. And we you and me, Gil, we were together. And we're listening and everyone's, you know, when you study Talmud, which is the oral law, it helps to explain the Torah. 
on all the yes. complex ideas, it, it helps. And you know, Absolutely. there's debates. Remember, there's debates. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so everyone's right. sharing their input on what they think about this and that. And at the very end, right, Rabbi Fromowitz, after everyone left, it's 10 o'clock at night. It's 10 o'clock. Everybody mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Fromowitz, I share something personal with him. And he's like, have a seat. I want you to, I want to share something, Gil, if you have time. I want you to to listen to this too. And, and David, if it's okay, if Gil can stay too and, and listen, I said, yeah, that's my brother. It's okay. <laughs> and so okay. Rabbi Fromowitz is there. And he's like, I got something to share. And it was about the Talmud. And we couldn't find, he couldn't find the book what he wanted to share. And there's a website too that he was going to look up on his phone, but the Wi Fi wasn't working. My Wi Fi wasn't working either for yeah. the app. And, mm -hmm. he, and the craziest thing, he recited word yes. by word in Hebrew. You remember that? Yes, that was something. You know, oh. I was like this. My eyes come, what? What in the world? <laughs> He's and, a genius. I don't care what nobody say. Rabbi Fabulous is a genius. I love him. 100%. And the fact that he closed his eyes and he starts saying in Hebrew. And there was four things he mentioned. I'm trying to remember the words, but basically it's like, I don't know, Gil, you, have, you might have a better memory than me. But you remember the four things he said about like a father? <laughs> about a father? Yeah, remember he said like something where you um when you when you give something like I don't know if it was like something about bad advice, how it can affect others. Others, right, right. Man, you got a good memory. You know, I try, you know, I try to make I'm a, I'm a little <laughs> old. I'm a little old. So you know, me memorizing a whole lot of stuff nowadays. I but I'll I'll know this Torah, but you know. Sometimes, you know, I have a good memory usually, but you know, sometimes I forget things, you know. Hey, I and we hey, we try, we try, you know, what I'm saying? right? Right, but, but right. It, it, it was so cool because when he was reciting it and we were sharing our thoughts about it, right? We, we looked it up, like I looked it up, the page he was talking about, and it, I think it was like 12B, I don't know, I forgot yeah. what letter, and, and <laughs> And he had it. And Gil, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've never met a rabbi where he can recite like the Hebrew and, and just break it down from Hebrew to English. And like we had another hour, just you and I and Rabbi from was about this topic. And I probably only met two geniuses in my whole life. And he's definitely like you said, brother, he's a genius. Yeah. He is. He is. And I'm, I'm and I have to honestly say I am so thankful for meeting him. And it's a it's, it's a story behind that, you know, how Hashem just gave me this amazing rabbi to be my teacher and to guide me. And I was on a plane going to New York to JFK Airport. And I'm reading, you know, here I go with the books. You know, I had these prayer books from home that my mother had gave to me. You know, it was like, you know, it's half uh, Hebrew and half English, but they're prayer books. Um, they're called the Union Book, if I'm not mistaken, but I just know my family always had these books. Um, it's a synagogue that's out in uh, Manhattan that my mother was still connected with, and they would always send my mother books. When I, last time I was home, she gave me the books, and she said, oh, just read them when you have time, if you're on the plane, if you're traveling, because I know you travel a lot. And I'm on the plane going through it. And this brother, Isaac, which they call me Yitzi, he was sitting next to me. So, you know, when you sitting down, I, I, I like the aisle seat. I don't know. My mother got me on this. Get the aisle seat so you know what's going on on this plane. Because when you're sitting in the middle or on the window, you always got to peep your head up to see what's going on. But if you're on that aisle seat, you can see back and front to know what's going on. <laughs> And, and I just thought that was funny. So every time I get a flight, I always do the aisle. So this, he was sitting in the middle seat and I just felt somebody staring at me. Like they kept looking, like doing this. It's like, yo, what's wrong with this brother? So I didn't pay no mind. I kept reading. I started seeing it again, seeing it again. 
So I said, is everything okay, brother? He said, no, I'm fine. He said, are you Jewish? He said, it's just like that. I said, yes, I am. He said, forgive me if you thought I was just there. I just thought it was amazing to see you reading this book. And I just had to ask. I said, no, it's nothing wrong with it. Don't feel like, you know, you couldn't ask me a question. He said, but that's what Jews do. We, when we see people reading and we see something that we're familiar with, they look in. Me and them had a nice long conversation. You know, that flight's like five, six hours from 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 Vegas or from Cali to to New York. It's a it's a long flight. We started talking. He was telling me about the yeshiva he was going to right around the corner from my house. So I was like, wow, okay. So I was amazed by that alone. I said, we got to exchange numbers. Where he was going was actually the same city I was going to. He was going to visit some family. And I said, I know you're going to be busy. I'm going to be busy, you know, but let's get together when I come back to Vegas. He said, okay, that sounds good. So we tried like three or four times to, to get together, but my schedule didn't allow me because I was traveling to Utah and I was, I was just getting like a nice big contract out there in Salt Lake City. So I was going back there every other week. So I did every the weeks that he was available, I just wasn't available. We finally went to a Starbucks right here in Vegas on Sahara in Durango. I'll never forget that. Every time I ride past, I said, wow, that was an amazing meeting. And he told me, he said, I want to introduce you to Rabbi Farmwoods. Okay. So... I get there, you know me, I'm always on time. I like to be late. Sitting there, me and uh, Yitzi and Rabbi Farmer came in at his Torah, you know, and he introduced me to him. We sat down. I asked him, did they want coffee? You know, he declined the coffee. That's fine. Let's sit down and talk. So I explained to him my same story, like I'm explaining it to you. And he said, we'll be in touch. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we'll be in touch when, you know, because I'll be excited. Like, oh, this guy seems like he's amazing. And we had a lot in common. You know, we was talking about various different cities in New York and where he lived in New York and stuff like that. And we finally got together. Um, they have this thing called Men's Night. So on a Thursday, they do it every, every month. Uh, like six in the evening to maybe let's say eight nine o'clock at night. So all the all the men get together, and talk, and discuss a few things. You know, with you know some current events, and then you know one of the rabbis will come out and talk with us and everything, just to get to know everybody in the community, so to speak. You know, and then we decided we're going to start having class on Friday for at least one hour. So I was. I was excited about that. And we've been doing it ever since. And it's funny because it's been a year this past uh, October that, you know, we actually got together and, 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 and had great conversations about various different things and, you know, my Judaism and my journey. And so it was real amazing. But I have to thank Izzy, Yitzy, excuse me, um, for him being on the plane and him just seeing me reading the book, which my mother gave me, which I just thought it was amazing. See, so you see the connection on how Hashem works and how he puts people together at the right time. And I couldn't even question it. I just said, thank you, Hashem, for you just doing this. And then one uh, men's night, Brother Elliot came out. And that's the first time I met him. It was at the men's night. And somebody referred him to Rabbi from which to teach him as well. And I'm sure you'll have him on your podcast that he can, you know, discuss his journey, but his journey is amazing too. And we had a lot in common, you know, we, and he was from New York. I'm from New York, you know, so we, we've been buddies from that day on and we, we studied every week. And if he can't make it to class, you know, I put my phone on speaker. He's listening. He's asking questions. So the way we are today, I have to truly say, when, when you know, when somebody says, oh, my best friend, this best friend, my whole best friend list has changed. And 
in an amount of a year. Because not that some of my friends that are non-Jews wasn't good friends. It's just that I'm maturing more and more in Judaism and I want to be amongst my fellow Jews. And I'm not trying to segregate and say, hey, you know, forget these guys. No, it's just that I love the new friends that I have, like yourself, uh, Elliot, you know, um, Rabbi Farm was, he's a friend, but he's a teacher and, and I love him. And he's, has been guiding me every day. I try to call, check on him, make sure he's okay. Does he need anything? He's such a humble person, but I love him. And I love our shul. I think we have an amazing shul. I think we have some amazing rabbis at, 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 at the shul, but I am so thankful for Rabbi Farmowitz. And, you know, he's always wants to teach. He's always wants to teach me something and learn about various different things and various different customs, you know. And it's this, it, it feels good that somebody takes out of this busy schedule to teach every week and dedicate it. Oh, yeah. You know me, I'm always trying to buy him a book. I bring a book, you know. <laughs> That's just me, though. I, you know, I love books and I like to share and I like to share books that's meaningful, mm -hmm. not just, hey, this is a novel. You know, it has to have something to do with Judaism. I that's just me, though. You know, that's true. Buddy. I could I could I could talk to some of my friends and they're like, man, you always in those books. Yeah. But these books are so powerful. They have a whole lot of meaning. It's going to help me grow and grow and grow more in Judaism. That's true, but real quick, I, I love your story on how you met Rabbi Farmer. I actually knew part of it, but not the whole thing. So it's amazing you got to get into details. And uh, I do have to wrap it up because Zoom is about to kick me out. So let me oh, just wow. say, yeah, you're you good. Pay the bill. Nah, nah. <laughs> but let me say real quick, guys, this is the Outlet to Reality, the oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Chee -chee. Y'all know where to find me. <laughs> Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, the Outlet to Reality. My TikTok is at Yakov28. And my Snapchat is Take One Pass It. Brother Gil, thank you for being here, man. And, and we'll be in touch, brother. All right, brother. Shalom. Shalom.